Hello, welcome to the EPG Pathshala program in linguistics. Today we will discuss module 26, prosodic features 2, tone, for the course Introduction to Phonetics and Phonology. Our main objective is to introduce you to the various aspects of tone, especially in the context of Indic languages. <clears throat> there are a large number of languages in India, especially in the Northeast and the Northern region, the Himalaya region, where we have languages in which tone plays an important role. And yet we lack in rich descriptions of these languages. Let's hope that by paying attention to the various aspects of tone, we take a serious note of tonal languages for research and ex explanation. Now, what is tone? Tone is on account of fundamental frequency changes. So there is a one-to-one -one relation between fundamental frequency or F0 and tone in a language. It's easy to see that fundamental frequency is involved in all human speech. The variations in fundamental frequency can be found in gender distinctions, for example, men and women, and in adult versus child. So children have much higher F0 than adults. However, tone here is simply for a general variation according to gender or age. But <clears throat> when fundamental frequency is used systematically to distinguish words, then we have tone. So we make a distinction between the use of fundamental frequency as a natural phenomenon uncontrolled phenomenon and the use of fundamental frequency as a controlled phenomenon in <coughs> the grammar of a language. Languages in which the fundamental frequency or tone is used to distinguish words are called tonal languages. Some examples of tonal languages are there on the screen. For example, in the Chinese language, especially the Mandarin variety, we have a lot, a lot many tones. As we see on the screen, the same vowel and consonant sequence gives us four different words because there are four different tones. So the word ma used when uttered with different tones high tone or high rising tone or low falling rising tone or high falling tone has four different words. One meaning mother, second meaning hem, third meaning horse and fourth meaning scold. You can listen to the pronunciations of these forms. They are well known in the literature. In the textbook by Peter Ladefoggett, this is also easily downloadable for free. You can turn to the cha relevant chapter, that is chapter 2 in the book, to listen to some of these um, uh, words uh, pronounced in the Mandarin Chinese way. Based on the use of tone <coughs> in distinguishing words, we have three types of languages. We have looked at one, namely tonal language. There are two other types, call them pitch accent or lexical accent language and intonational languages. Pitch accent or <coughs> lexical accent languages. In the pitch accent languages, 
there is only one syllable which is which has a certain tone unlike in tonal languages where in some languages it is possible to have every syllable with its own tone but in a pitch language pitch accent language or lexical accent language there can be only one syllable in a word with a tone that's one secondly not all the words need to have tone so <clears throat> we have languages such as japanese uh, we have swedish and among older languages ancient greek and best of all closer home vedic sanskrit vedic sanskrit for example had a very well developed a pitch accent system the grammarians especially panini spoke about these uh, pitch accents used in vedic sanskrit the names given to these to three different pitch accents in vedic sanskrit were were udatta means high anudatta who means low and swarita a circumflex which is a combination of high and low you can watch the video with the link here to see how vedic sanskrit was recited uh, <clears throat> you can you will notice that the priests reciting the rig vedic hymns actually are moving their hands up and down and so on you will notice that the movement accompanies different tones different pitch accents in vedic sanskrit somehow Uh, the later sanskrit classical sanskrit which we study today came to lose uh, pitch accents uh, it is uh, one of the you know, issues in accent languages is that you will notice that tone can arise in a in a language which is not tonal or tone in a tonal language can be lost we will briefly look at them in the present module the third type of language is international language in which words are not distinguished by tone the tone is used purely at the sentence level to this to express various meanings <clears throat> grammatical meanings discourse meanings meanings having to do with a certain attitude of the speaker these are called the functions of tone in these languages the <clears throat> pitch occupies the entire stretch of a sentence and has a certain contour <clears throat> which is expressed for different functions or meanings as we said so then we have three types of languages based on the use of fundamental frequency in them tone languages pitch accent languages and international languages for the sake of clarity the pitch accent languages we prefer to call them lexical accent languages because even in international languages sometimes we use pitch accent to express stress so if we keep pitch accent for stress then lexical accent is a better term for so called pitch accent languages here on the screen are some examples of a pitch accent language such as japanese in japanese we have these contrastive pairs the first pair the pitch accent is on the first syllable which gives you the word now and when it is on the second syllable it gives you the word living room quite different from each other a word such as hashi can have three different pronunciations based on difference in pitch accent to give us three different words namely chopsticks bridge and edge in chopstick the first syllable has pitch accent in bridge the second syllable has pitch accent 
and in edge there is no pitch accent as we said that in a pitch accent language there may be words without any pitch accent having a distinctive function and this is what distinguishes a pitch accent language from a tonal language let's look at some examples of sentences in an international language we have two sentences given on the screen satwinder went to the theater yesterday said with the following tone on theater the sentence is a statement meaning satwinder did not go anywhere else but to the theater the second sentence satwinder went to the theater yesterday said with a rising tone on theater the sentence is a question meaning whether satwinder went to the theater or anywhere else thus what we notice is that it is purely by the use of pitch that the two sentences are differentiated grammatically the falling tone on theater gives you a statement and a rising tone on theater gives you a question more than half the languages of the world are tonal languages it may appear to be a surprising fact for a lot of indians who speak non tonal languages but even in india if you look at the number of languages which are tonal then they are more greater in number than non tonal languages we don't notice them because the number of speakers are less but the number of languages is large there are certain regions which <laughs> in which uh, tonal languages concentrate for, such as africa almost the whole of africa is <coughs> full of tonal languages there are east asian regions american and even some languages in different parts uh, of the world here and there which are tonal languages now <clears throat> we have most tibeto burman languages as tonal languages and we have some indo aryan languages as well especially those which are in contact with the himalayan languages which are tonal languages but the contact is not a necessary condition a language such as punjabi also has tone in it which means that tones can develop in a non tonal language the history of punjabi is somewhat more recent tones have come to develop in punjabi in the last 5 to 600 years given below are examples of tones in two tibeto burman languages on the screen the chokri has four tones high high mid low mid and low liang mai has four tones but these are high mid low and extra low as we said that prosodic phenomena are different from segmental phenomena because we talk about them in relation to other units thus the classification of the four different levels of tone in these languages are different because of the relationship amongst them when we go into greater depth uh, of the study of tone languages then we find that there are two different types of tone found in world languages one is level tone or register tone these are the ones which we have just looked at in these two indic languages chokri and liang mai all the four tones in them are register tones they belong to a certain level of tone in some languages we also have reg contour tones the contour tones are those which involve a change from one level to another 
from a high level to low called falling tone, from a low level to high called rising tone. <clears throat> These can also be high falling or mid falling, low rising or high rising. So you can have more complicated systems such as rising falling in which you have low, high, low or a falling rising in which you have high, low and high. Phonologists have tried to explain the difference uh, between these two types as characterizing uh, tonal languages of Africa, let us say, from those of East Asia. But this distinction is not found to be quite valid. <coughs> Indic languages have both level and contour tones. And we are told that some African languages also have both the types of tones. Let's look at some of the contour tone languages. Thus, in Paite, we notice that there is a combination of a level tone and a contour tone. So we have mid, which is a level tone, falling, which is a contour tone, and rising again, a contour tone. So these are the three tones in the Tibeto-Burman language, Paite. How do we represent tones in the phonemic transcription languages? The structuralist grammarians devised more than one system to represent tone. Let's look at them. One of the <coughs> ways to represent tone is by using accent marks. For example, you see them for the tones in Liang Mai on the screen. The other, uh, other system of representing tone is through the use of numerals, which we see on the screen for Chokri. In the examples from Paiti on the screen, we see both the accent mark and the numeral system representing tones. The numeral system for assigning tones varies among linguists. Normally, the Western tradition of representing tone with the use of numerals has higher numerals for higher tones. So let's say three is for higher tone, one is for low tone. Amongst the East Asian linguists, tonologists we call them, <coughs> the practice is to use lower numerals for higher tones. Thus, one will stand for a high tone and three will stand for a low tone. There is no uh, absolute uh, system that linguists have to follow. The only thing that you are expected to do is to declare the numerical system that you will use for expressing the various levels of tone. In addition to these, there is another a third way to represent tones in the literature. This is the accent letters way. Remember, in module three, we discussed the IPA chart. The IPA chart on the lower right hand side contains the suprasegmental sounds and the diacritics symbols used for representing those. For the tonal marks, we notice that the IPA has this accent letter system. You will notice them on the screen. We have a letter accent for extra high, for high, mid, low, and extra low levels. And we also have the systems for contour tones, as you notice, for high rising, high falling, low falling, and low falling rising contours. 
Now, printing the various letter accents from the IPA chart is pretty straightforward. <clears throat> you may not be able to immediately see how to do this, but a simple way is to take your cursor on to the level tone, such as extra high or high or mid or low, for the level tones, that's simple. For the contour tones, however, all you need to do is to first click on the diacritic for the level tone, let's say high, and then keeping the symbol there, you click at the same place on, let's say, a low tone. When you do this, you will have the contour tone representing falling tone. So, <clears throat> the IPA symbols have been pretty systematically devised within the IPA font, the Unicode font system, which you will find in most of the Unicode systems such as Times, uh, New Roman or Cambria or any of those that you may be familiar with. It's worth practicing how to represent those symbols at this stage. And in addition to the three ways of representing tones, there is yet another way, a fourth way of representing tones, namely by use of letters such as H for a high tone, L for a low tone, HL for a falling tone from H to L, LH for a rising tone from L to H and so on. It is this system which is in great use in present day phonological analyses, but we'll come to them in the other course on advanced phonology. For now, we assume that because the other three systems of representation were in use in structural phonology, we'll first get familiar with them and at least the one of them, namely the letter accent terms, is in use in IPA. The acoustic representation of tone. We have certain software such as Prat, which is in wide use today, which presents the representation of the acoustic properties of tone. On the screen, we have representation of the acoustic properties of four words in the Angmai. These include two aspects of the acoustic properties. One, the oscillogram, and the other, the pitch track. The pitch track clearly brings out the difference in the four levels of the tones of these words, which have the consonant vowel sequence, sir, and u. Now, when you, we record data, it's important to note that we have to be very careful in the way we record them. Because we are dealing with tonal languages, we have to try and see that the speakers do not bring in those aspects of fundamental frequency that will clash with the lexical tone. For example, when you give the speakers a list of words, let's say English words, one, two, three, John, Mary, Suresh, Ahmed, you will notice that when, you, when we give these words to be read, the speakers tend to have something like a rising tone towards the end, like as if they are reading in a list, one, two, three. Now, because these are tonal languages, then these are false tones because they, are, they do not distinguish the words. In which case, suppose the final syllable has a tone, then adding an, another rise would interfere with the tonal system. So, we have to be extra careful. How do we do this? One way to be have natural, spontaneous speech recorded and then you select those words. 
and the other would be even a semi spontaneous uh, way of recording where you give a certain frame to the speaker. For example, you can say something like In Paite, the word for book is this. So, when you have this given, uh, let us say, a frame, then we ensure that there is no kind of a listing effect on the tone. So, we have to find out how to avoid the use of false tones by the speakers in this language. And this is of special importance in the study of tones in tonal languages. Tonal patterns. An interesting question is how many tones are required for a language to be called a tonal language? Is there a minimum limit? Is there a maximum limit? The minimum limit is logical. Fundamental frequency is used in all languages, but only when a systematic difference in the fundamental frequency is found to distinguish words, then we have a tonal language and this requires that there should be at least two tones in a language for a language to be called a tonal language. A, a, a lot of languages have only two tones. Actually, the number of languages with only two tones is very high. Even amongst Tibeto-Burman languages, we may find that major languages such as Meite has only two levels of tone. Is there any upper limit to the number of tones? That's a question which is uh, not so easy to decide, but it is something like this, that the maximum number of levels found in a language are only four, four levels. But a language can have more than four tones. If you have both level tones and contour tones. So, you can have four levels of tones, low, mid, high, extra high for example. And in addition, you can also have something like a falling tone or a rising tone. So, if you have both falling tone and rising tone added to the four tones, you get six tones. We are told that the maximum number of tones found in the language is about eight eight tones, a combination of both contour tone and level tones. We have a random list of Indic languages with these different numbers and patterns of tone in them. Take a look at the screen. Grammatical function of tones. Although tone is used in most languages to distinguish lexical words, lexical items, lexical meanings of words, sometimes languages also have tone distinguish the grammatical meanings of words. For example, in the language Paite, whenever a word a verb is turned into an infinitive form, then there is a middle tone used. You have these examples on the screen. The word for to wipe, to cut apart, to complete. You will notice that the stem has one tone, but when the infinitive is formed, then the infinitive comes to have single tone. So, the mid tone has a grammatical function here. It is used to express, to form infinitive forms of verbs. Tone bearing unit. What is the unit, the phonological unit in a word that bears the tone? This is a somewhat controversial issue. The whole syllable or the rhyme or the mora. These various units have been proposed 
to be the tone bearing units. It appears, however, that on the onset in a syllable never bears any tone, but that the whole syllable can bear a tone. So in general then, we find that it is the syllable which is the tone bearing unit in most languages. But as I said, this is can be treated as controversial. Phonologists may claim that there are other units such as mora, which bears the tone in some languages. We do not go into these issues, but accept the general position, namely the syllable as a tone bearing unit. Two very important processes which find mention in the IPA chart in tonal languages are downstepping and upstepping. Downstepping or downdrift. This process takes place when a certain tone is realized at a lower level than its pronunciation in isolation. And upstepping takes place when a certain tone is realized at a higher level than its realization in isolation. Usually it may have to do with a certain adjacent tone. Both these processes are very common in languages with only two, two tones. However, we have evidence for downstepping and upstepping in languages in, with more than tones in them too. Now, what is the importance of downstepping and upstepping that we should be talking about them? The importance is analytical. That is, if you do not recognize downstepping and upstepping as phonological processes in tonal languages, it is quite likely that when you fix the tonemes, that is the tonal phonemes in a language, you may arrive at a larger number than are there as contrastive units. For example, with downstepping, let us say a language has three tones, high, mid and low. If you have downstepping of the high tone, then you may find that it occurs somewhere between high and mid. Then you have a fourth tone then in such a language proposed. And it can be the same with uh, upstepping. So a very careful analysis will be able to separate tone levels which are on account of downstepping or upstepping and give you the main lexical contrast, the downstepped and upstepped levels of tones will be predicted by rule. Let's take a look at some of these examples of downstepping and upstepping from Indic languages. So on the screen, you have a, an example of downstepping in the language Paite. There are two tones here, one for the word meaning salt and the other for the word meaning tui. The word salt has a mid tone and the word tui, water, has a rising tone with LH. So in the compound word meaning salt, water, the middle tone is realized as lower than the middle tone. That means it is a downstepped tone. It is realized at the same level as the beginning of the contour tone for water. We notice the difference here in the pitch tracks. For the first word for salt, we have a fairly high level of tone. That represents the mid-tone here. <clears throat> and for water, we have a rising tone. 
from a lower level to a higher level. In the word salt water, the beginning is the same for salt as for water. So the mid-tone has been lowered here and that's how you get a, a downstepped uh, tone for the first word in the compound word salt water. For the process of upstepping, we have another word from Paite. Take a look at it on the screen. Compounding is a common process in Tibeto-Burman languages. We have a compound here, meaning beer pot. It comes from the two words, beer and pot. A simple compound dash. The word beer has a mid-tone and the word pot too has a mid-tone. But when these words come together, then the first word, beer, is realized with an upstepped mid-tone. And we have the pitch tracks here bringing out the differences very clearly. That is, in the word for beer pot, you notice that the first word, zoo, has a fairly higher level than the <clears throat> isolated pronunciation of that word. So we have here a, 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 a very interesting example of upstepping in Paite. Floating tones. An intriguing and very interesting <clears throat> type of tone called floating tones. A floating tone is a tone with a meaning but without any segmental realization. The examples for Paite that we noticed before for the grammatical function of mid-tone can also be explained in terms of a mid-tone being a floating tone in Paite so that when you produce a word which is an infinitive form of the verb no matter what its earlier tone is, it gets realized with the mid-tone, which is there always in the abstract. So the word wipe, when it is turned into to wipe, then it will be realized from a falling tone, it will be realized to a mid-tone. Similarly, with the other words for cut apart and complete, they <coughs> have different tones such as rising tone and mid-tone, they too are realized as mid-tone because the mid-tone is the falling, is the uh, floating tone and that is the tone which comes to stay, the other tones, the preceding tone is lost. Tone spreading. Now in languages that have tone mainly in the root, when we have a longer word formed in these agglutinative systems, then the tone of the stem spreads on to the other affixes as you see in the examples on the screen here. We have described here how spreading takes place. If the root has an H, then all the affixes have also come to have H. If the root has L, then all the affixes also come to have L, that is low tone. And we have some examples from Shona here to illustrate the process. For example, the word, the stem Teng has a high tone and Ereng has a low tone, Ereng. Now, when longer words are formed from them, then the affixes do take the same tone as that of the stem as shown here. Do segments play any role in the realization of tone? In some languages, yes. Sometimes the presence of a segment can affect the realization of a tone in them. For example, in this very interesting language, Paite, from which we have cited so many examples, because it's the entire structure seems to be affected by the tones in Paite, 
we also have an instance of the presence of a glottal stop affecting the realization of tone as a mid-tone. The rule is stated with the examples on the screen. So the word to head but rising tone, to die, to see with different tones, namely mid and falling tone, all of them are realized as of a mid tone following a glottal stop. Finally, the processes of tonogenesis and tonal loss with which we began the discussion in this module. Tonogenesis is a very in interesting phenomenon taking place in a majority of world languages, world regions, for example. In India, uh, the, we have the very interesting case of the Indo-Aryan languages, Punjabi, Dogri, and a few others, which did not have tones in them, being Indo-Aryan languages, but they have come to have tones in them today. The, the tonogenesis can have any factor that helps tones to develop. In Punjabi, what we find is that, as well as in Dogri, the Indo-Aryan system of contrasts among the stop phonemes as voiceless and aspirated pa, voiced and aspirated ba, voiceless aspirated pa, voiced un, voiced aspirated bha. So we have pa, ba, pa, bha, or pa, pa, ba, bha. In these languages, the voiced aspirated sounds have been lost. Now, in all those cases we ha where we have tones, they are accompanied with the loss of voiced aspirates. Or rather, wherever the voiced aspirates have been lost in, in the Indo-Aryan languages that are related to Punjabi, in Punjabi, we have a tone arising there. Now, because the tone has come into existence because of the loss of uh, some phonetic properties, <coughs> you may find tones being present in other kinds of segments as well in Punjabi. And thus, we have a somewhat uh, difficult case when it comes to finding a phonetic explanation of how tones arise. But nevertheless, it's an interesting phenomenon and needs further investigation. Tonal, tonal loss is an even more difficult uh, phenomenon to, to study because, first of all, it is not as frequent as tonogenesis noted in the literature. Sometimes it has been seen in sort of in historical perspective, for example, Vedic Sanskrit came to lose its tone and some other languages seem to have less tone than their neighbor than their neighbors. For example, Meitei has only two tones, whereas the neighboring Tibetan Burman languages have a larger number of tones. It is possible that tonal loss is on account of the contact with non-tonal languages. Whereas with tonogenesis may be internal to the system, that is because of certain phonetic changes having taken place in a language, tones may arise. Tonal loss may also be on account of phonetic changes or may well be on account of contact with languages. So it is the importance of the roles of contact as well as internal phonetic factors involved in both tonal genesis and tonal loss that need to be studied in detail. That, with that, we come to the end of this module. To summarize, we have looked at the importance of fundamental frequency, both at the level of words and at the level of sentences in expressing lexical 
or grammatical meanings in words. We noted the different classifications of languages according to the, uh, uh, to the role of tone in them and focused on tonal languages. We looked at the various aspects of tonal languages, the role of morphology, the various levels of tones, the, the way to represent tones, the phenomenon of tonal tonogenesis and tonal loss in these languages. And we hope that the discussion of tones in these languages will, will provide you uh, an insight into the working of tones in tonal languages.